Hey bitches, welcome back to my channel. I'm sitting here once again with the love of my life. How are you doing? I am higher than astronaut. Yeah, I am as well. I feel like we need to be a little elevated though to talk about this next person because it is none other than Cole Cardigan once again. After we posted our last video about him when he tried to like call us out and said that we were like lamos and we were just these horrible people. All we do is bully influencers on the internet and how we like stalk them basically. So this is what Nick and Dustin were talking about. <laughs> Like, I literally, like, didn't even have any money to, like, order McDonald's last night. The following Thursday. I've always been super irresponsible when it came to, like, paying my bills. Like, I, like, with anything. Like, even when I would have the money, I would just be terrible at it. I would never pay it on time. Not because I didn't have it, but because I legit was just irresponsible. They literally have no talent and personality of their own to where they have to make money. They're, they're dogging on me for like being a content creator and accepting tips. Spare change, spare change, ma'am. If I do have even one person that cares to listen that can spare a dollar or five dollars, it helps literally more than you know. Those types of dudes are lamos. Those are the kind of people that literally need help. Well, people started tagging me in screen recordings of Cole Crygan's live streams that he would do over on TikTok. And in this one, you remember a few videos back when we talked about him and we were showing that he was begging for like SZA tickets, saying that he needed to go. It was going to be a life changing concert for him. He was telling everyone that he had this sugar daddy that was possibly we gonna pay for these tickets he was like let's see if it happened well i guess it did not happen and do you know what he was doing he was on his live stream once again literally with the fakest tears and as i was watching this thank you to whoever tagged me in this because this was comedic gold for me like never in his life would he receive an oscar it was so cringe carissa where are you You don't understand how much this concert means to me. Like, it's literally more than a concert. I know my haters are like literally laughing so hard right now at me, but it's more than a concert. And you, I like literally have not needed something as bad as I need this. So, thank you so much, guys. Uh... <laughs> Carissa, you are literally a heaven sent angel. I love you so much. So much. We're literally like, we're literally 300 away from being able to get one, the first ticket. And if I have to go by myself, I will. I don't give a. Carissa. Thank you so much. That was so sweet. Also, my birthday's coming up too, if you want to use that as like an excuse. <laughs> Carissa, thank you. Like literally my birthday is like over a month away. Wait. Over two months away. The level of embarrassment that I feel yeah. for Cole Kerrigan getting on here and basically begging for a SZA ticket. He left his dignity at the door. Yeah. He just does not give a single okay. anymore. I don't think that he ever really had dignity, though. Like, what name a time? I can't think of one. And I had tweeted out the other day about this, and I said, imagine getting on the internet and e-begging for a living. Yeah. And a lot there were some people that took offense to me saying that, and I didn't mean that, like, in a bad way. If people have, like, emergencies they need help with, of mm. course, that's fine. But people that make a career out of like begging and scamming and grifting for money on TikTok on live streams and they say that they're doing it for tips. They're not doing it for tips. He's e-begging. He He's hand-handling. He tried to say that he was a content creator that was only accepting tips, but there are so many 
fucking clips of him literally begging for money from people. Beg. Like, that he cannot afford his bills. He's going to get kicked out of his apartment. Like, he needs to pay his rent and all of that. I honestly thought the way that Cole Kerrigan begged for money on the internet was really bad. But then somebody tagged me in this other video of someone begging for money. And she was literally asking people if they could just send, like, one or two dollars because she's trying to, like, save up some money so she can go and get her daughter. Well, then when somebody sent her one dollar, she started to literally get upset with them and say, like, why would you even send one dollar? I would never send somebody one dollar. At least in the Minnesota, they can get a tank of gas. And she was like, when I get off this live stream, I'm going to send that dollar back. I got 64 people in here. Can all y'all send me one dollar? Can y'all send me two dollars to please help me in my situation so I can go get my daughter? Can all y'all please help me? Ten people. Can ten people send two dollars to help me? I've been asking people for one or two dollars. Can you send a dollar? Can I won't even send nobody a dollar. I, 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 I said I won't go say no. I won't even send nobody no dollar. I, I won't even do that. I won't even send nobody no dollar. And I'm just keep. I'm just keep. You know why I ask for that? Because it's from the, it's from your heart. But literally, I won't even send nobody no fucking dollar. And I, you know, and I think these people are doing this to be petty. And when I get off alive, I'm gonna send them a dollar back. How is a dollar gonna help me in my situation? How is a dollar gonna help me in my situation? The least I would do is send somebody enough to get a gallon of gas. That ain't even a gallon of gas. I wouldn't even send, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, that's like kicking me when I'm already down. You can't even buy nothing in the store for a dollar. I thought that he was just trying to get a ticket for himself. But in that clip, he literally said that he's like $400 away from the first ticket. So how many tickets was he trying to get? Who was he trying to take? Certainly not the Splendid Daddy. It's just so crazy to me that people literally sit there in Cole's live streams and watch what we all just watched with those fake ass tears, him trying to pretend that he's actually crying and he's so excited that Carissa sent that money. But how could anyone actually look at that clip and think that he is actually genuinely crying? Moving on from that, the next person that I want to talk about is none other than Tiffany Moon, because I don't know if anybody here watches The Real Housewives of Miami, or if you watch The Real Housewives of Dallas, but that is where Tiffany Moon is from. But she's also an her. anesthesiologist. But if you watch The Real Housewives of Miami, then you would know that they are doing their like reunion right now one of the things that larsa pippen said to another cast member like really upset the internet and really upset tiffany moon because she's an anesthesiologist and the lady that larsa said this to is an anesthesiologist as well but larsa literally fixed her mouth as they were arguing back and forth in this reunion and said to this lady she's like at least i have a real job and what's funny about that and why everyone is so upset about that is first of all being an anesthesiologist is like a really badass thing yeah but what larsa does and what larsa was talking about this season on real housewives of miami is the fact that she sells her feet over on OnlyFans. So people are like, bitch, how the f are you trying to tell people that your job is more important than what her job is? Well, Tiffany Moon responded to that and she dragged the out of Larsa Pippen. I have, I have real doctor. jobs, okay? Not like you. Putting people to sleep. What in the disrespect is going on on Real Housewives of Miami? This is absolutely outrageous. Larsa saying that Dr. Nicole doesn't have a real job. Meanwhile, Larsa's what? Selling pictures of her feet on OnlyFans? It's just crazy to me that as much plastic surgery as Larsa has had, that she doesn't have a greater appreciation for anesthesiologists. Like, I respect and love my surgical colleagues, but y'all know that without anesthesia, there's no surgery, right? And doesn't she have like three or four kids? I guess she never had an epidural since all we do is put patients to sleep you know what larsa we do put patients to sleep but we also wake them up we also secure their airway and breathe for them during the surgery we put in additional intravenous lines for the administration of blood products and vasoactive agents we give analgesics during the surgery so that after you're cut open and you wake up in the recovery room you're not in excruciating pain so next time you or your kids need an anesthesiologist, Larsa, I hope they do much more than just put you to sleep. Larsa, I really think that you should apologize for your comment, but honestly, the chances of that happening are probably the same as the chance that you'll admit that you had a BBL. Bye, girl. But Tiffany Moon read her mm -hmm. ass the f down, especially with the BBL comment. That was like the little chef's kiss at the end for me. I really hope that Bravo brings back the Real Housewives of Dallas. That was my favorite franchise. The drama that happened on that show was just like amazing. And I would love to see Tiffany Moon back on television because the way that she read Larsa down, actually, you know what? You know how Bravo does that like Real Housewives girls trip type of thing? They need to have a trip. <laughs> Larsa needs to be on it. And so does Tiffany Moon. I would like to see that television for sure. The best part of Tiffany Moon's read though for me was the BBL comment because if you watch the season of Real Housewives of Miami or maybe it was like the last season, she tried to deny that she had the BBL for like the longest time. And speaking of someone else who lies about having BBLs, James Charles is getting talked about once again for two different reasons this time. 
But the first one is, you know that this whole TikTok ban thing is going on right now. It was in Congress. The CEO of TikTok was actually in there yesterday and he was testifying. It went on for like four or five hours. And I don't think that it went that well. Just from like the general consensus of people online, they do not think that it went well for the CEO of TikTok. But it's not that guy's fault. Those Congress people are honestly embarrassing. They don't even know how Wi-Fi works. They didn't know what they were asking. And I'm honestly embarrassed that we had those people representing all of us, 150 million people that use TikTok. Well, James Charles uploaded a TikTok about this whole TikTok ban and what happened today in Congress. And he basically told them all that they can go themselves. I don't know if everybody's been keeping up with the congressional hearing that's been happening today uh, with the CEO of TikTok about the potential ban of TikTok in America. But oh my God, watching these clips has made me beyond infuriated. Like I'm actually like seething. This is just such a good reminder that young people need to get out and vote. Your voice matters. Your vote matters for actual elected officials that have brain cells. The one congressional guy that was sitting there being like, so uh, if, if I use my TikTok account in my home, does that mean that, uh, that, that, that TikTok, the app has uh, accessed my, my home Wi-Fi network? Yes, you f***ing imbecile. That's how it works. That's how the internet works. I heard that uh, when you're filming in the TikTok app and you're looking at the front camera, that uh, the AI algorithm actually uh, tracks your eyeballs and knows when your pupils dilate and uh, sends a message back to China. So no, sir, that's actually completely inaccurate. Our app does not store any facial data. The only time that it even recognizes your face is when you're using a filter, such as like sunglasses. Um, it just needs to know like where to put the sunglasses on your eyeballs. Uh, why, do you, why do you need to know where my eyeballs are? Are you storing that information? Shut the f up, you f***ing idiot! You as a platform claim to have a very strict no violence policy, but I'm finding that very hard to believe that you actually enforced that when I found this video on my For You page that has 326 views and 12 likes. It's been up for 41 days. 41 days and nobody's taking this video down of a on Google Clip Art Images and the very members of this here Congress room. Now, if you're saying that you're going to protect 150 million Americans, how are you going to do that if you can't even protect the very people that are right here? That's a really good point, actually. Uh, I found these videos on TikTok of kids uh, eating NyQuil and jumping off juice crates. So kids, our children are dying from your app. What are you going to, what are you going to do about it, you f***ing idiots? You f***ing Congress useless idiots. Actually, children, because kids are being shot at school every other week and you dumbasses refuse to pass any sort of legislation to actually protect them. That's your job, not the CEO of TikTok. Really interesting how it's always thoughts and prayers and the right to bear arms. They're a problem then, but as soon as you see it on your For You page, it's a big issue. You know what else is killing children? The lack of universal health care because children are getting sick and parents cannot afford to pay for their medicine because insurance won't cover it. And it costs thousands of dollars that people are not even making a minimum wage. You know what else is children? The lack of support for therapy and mental health care for LGBT kids, for poverty kids, for trans kids. Meanwhile, you guys are all passing legislation to actively hurt all of the above groups, including minorities. How about you do your job of protecting the 300 million Americans that live here? Not the CEO of TikTok. You know, this might be the one thing that I can agree with this human on. You think? Like the one thing out of all the other things in the world. This might be the one because at least he's using his voice because I tweeted out today, there's not really a lot of people that are big on TikTok talking about this potential yeah. TikTok fan and that is blowing my mind because if they were trying to take my platform away. I would be so vocal and trying to get the news and the word out there about what they were doing. But people are just like thinking it's not going to happen and that it's some kind of joke. And I think it's highly possible. Now, I genuinely do believe that there are many like larger creators out there that think it's just going to blow over. It's never going to happen. TikTok is always going to be here. And we were talking about this earlier. I find it so weird that somebody like Michaela has not said anything about this on her platform, at least not that I have seen. You would think that Michaela, whose income literally comes from all those hidden sponsorships on TikTok, would be very 
very upset that they are possibly trying to get rid of this platform. And honestly, just judging by what we all saw from like all the TikTok videos that are going with people talking about this, honestly looking like TikTok might be banned. Just my own personal conspiracy theory about the whole situation with TikTok is, I think that they're trying to control this because of the whole meta Facebook thing. Like Mark Zuckerberg is so pissed off that he's losing like stacks of cash mm -hmm. every single day. But I really do think that people are going to boycott Instagram and Facebook if this does go through. I'm going to delete mine. Know. I'm going to delete my shit. I saw that some people on TikTok were trying to delete their Facebook and Instagram and it was not allowing them to do so. And now on the page where you would go to actually delete it, it says that some people are not eligible to do so. What? Mm -hmm. I know that I've had my Facebook since like basically almost the inception of it. It's like several years old. There's got to be a way that you can download everything off of it if yeah. you actually were going to I would hate it. to delete it just because like my memories with my mother are there and that's really all I have is the digital stuff. I don't understand why they would think that if TikTok went down and it was no more here in the United States that people would go flock over to Instagram and Facebook as well because it was just announced that they're actually doing away with people getting paid for doing reels. I think that people would come over to YouTube before they even thought about looking at Instagram <laughs> as well as Facebook. You know what? If TikTok goes down, what is Cole going to do? Where is he going to grift? I don't know, but if I was a social media influencer and the platform that I had built was about to be like banned, mm -hmm. I would be being so vocal about it. And it's just shocking to me that there's not more people with large platforms speaking out about it. It's crazy. And I think that it's government overreach. The other reason that James Charles is getting talked about right now is because Nakia Joy uploaded a story time video and she was detailing this experience that she had with one of the largest influencers in the world. Or it was literally like lack thereof experience with this person because she said that they basically could not even be bothered with her. They ignored her completely. Story time about the time that one of the world's biggest and most famous influencers completely ignored me. It seems like you guys love stories about influencers being awful. Believe me, I got a lot of them because I've been doing this for a long time and I have met a lot of not very nice people. Now this particular influencer was coming to Australia. I'm kind of like a tour with a brand. They were here working with a brand and they were doing a bunch of public appearances. This person was massive. Like people were waiting in queues for hours even to just seek them from a distance. It was crazy. Now as part of their tour, the brand had actually organized an influencer event with them and they had hand selected a few influencers and I think it was probably maybe about 10 of us to actually go to this boat party with this massive influencer to kind of spend the night partying with them and like celebrating the tour and just celebrating their success and like I couldn't believe it but I was one of the lucky ones to be chosen. I was nervous. It's not very often that you're around a person with like this level of fame. And I just truly couldn't believe that I had been chosen to go to this event. I was so excited. Now this event was actually happening in Sydney and on a really beautiful yacht, like super bougie. So I drove myself to the airport, flew up to Sydney. Now when we got to the event, everything was pretty much just as fancy as we had expected. The boat was beautiful. And everyone that was there had huge followings, like massive, like the biggest influencers in Australia. They start serving cocktails, all this amazing food. There's a DJ playing music and we all start thinking, where is this massive influencer that we're here to meet that this whole event is about? Because the whole idea of this thing was that we were supposed to be partying with this person and celebrating this person. So naturally you'd be like, where are they? So by this point, the yacht is now cruising around the Sydney Harbour. We're all having a great time, but we're all still wondering like, is this person going to come out? I remember everybody thinking that maybe we're going to go back to shore, pick them up, and it was going to be like this big dramatic entrance. An hour passes. No show. <laughs> Another hour passes. No show. We're starting to think, um, what the hell is going on here? Now, obviously, being that this was a big bougie yacht, there were two stories. So there was the bottom story, which was like, I think a private suite. And the rest of us were all partying on the top level with the DJ and where all the food was. But if you wanted to go to the toilets, you had to go down to the lower level. So naturally, me being me, I'd had a couple of cocktails and I was like, okay, your girl needs to pee. So I take myself down the little staircase to go to the toilet and guess who I see there? <laughs> this huge influencer that we were all there to celebrate. And I I'm telling you, this brand had spent probably hundreds of thousands of dollars on this event, like hiring the yacht. Now you can imagine that I have totally freaked out when I've made eye contact with this person because, oh my God, famous. Like a literal celebrity standing right there in front of me. And seemingly I can just never keep my mouth shut. So I was like, oh my God, hi, I'm Nikia. You know, what an honor to meet you. Oh, I was like shaking, sweating, like freaking out. They completely ignored me. <laughs> Like, completely ignored me. And it was definitely like a level of distaste. Like, they were looking at me like, get away from me. <laughs> I take myself to the toilet and then I take myself back upstairs like quick smart. And I say to my friend who's at this event with me, uh, they're down there. This person that we're all waiting for is downstairs. And she was like, 
What? You're telling me that this person that we're here to celebrate is downstairs right now, completely ignoring us? Now, I've told you guys before, I'm always a sucker for giving people the benefit of the doubt. So I was like, oh, maybe there's just been a drama. They're going to come up eventually. Like, we were literally all there to meet this person, to see this person, and to celebrate this person. Another hour passes. Still no show. And the boat starts heading back in. So by this point, it's like the boat docks and the music turns off. And we're all like, um... <laughs> a security guard appears at the top of the stairs and literally holds their arms out and basically bars us from getting off the boat. Mm. <laughs> and then me and the rest of the other influencers literally stand on the boat <laughs> and watch this influencer get off with their security team and walk down the dock <laughs> and leave the party without even saying hello. <laughs> I kid you not, we were all dumbfounded. Like, did something go wrong? Are they not well? Did something dramatic happen? Spent hundreds of dollars to fly to Sydney to come to this event. More money on my outfit. We've gotten all ready. We've taken hours out of our day. And this person could not even say hello to us. So we all get off the boat and catch Uber's home. And like, literally the night is over. And then I found out a couple of days later from one of the influencers who was good friends with the girl who worked for the brand that this super famous influencer just didn't want to be around us and had zero interest in meeting any of us. I'll tell you what, guys, I've never felt more invisible. It was such a waste of time and money. Honestly, the things that happen at these events, you guys, it's wild. You didn't say the name or the time frame that it happened with this influencer, but people were trying to, like, think back of, like, what brands have, like, brought big influencers to Australia to do some kind of, like, tour. And there were three people whose names were being thrown around in the comment section, but there was one person who reigned supreme in that, and that was none other than James Charles. And people think that she's referring to, like, some cruise that a brand would have done back when James Charles went to Australia in 2019. And can we talk about that for a second? Because the fact that Tati dropped that video when she knew that James was in the air on the way to Australia. I see a lot of TikToks as well of people talking about the bi sister moment and they're like, everybody has a story of what they were doing when that dropped on the <laughs> internet. That's my question for everybody out there. What were you doing when Tati dropped the bi sister video? The other two names that were in her comment section that people thought it could possibly be was Nikki Tutorials and Jeffree Star. So you guys will have to let us know down below if you think that her comment section is correct and it's actually James Charles that she was referring to. Because honestly, that would make sense that if James went over to Australia with Morphe, they obviously would have had events and things planned and i'm sure that during that time he wouldn't have wanted to be around anyone let alone <laughs> other influencers when he's literally getting dragged across the internet and moving on from that it looks like jeffree star has lost yet another friend i cannot keep count now of how many friends jeffree star has had a public falling out with on social media well the other day jeffree star uploaded an instagram story and he was saying that like once a year comes the time where he needs to like cut people off and he's removing all the negativity from his life and the fake ass bitches hello hello you guys good morning it's been a few days since i've been back from paris i've been catching up on the ranch doing endless emails chores assignments um so it's time to dive into makeup reviews again so sit tight buckle up we've had a few days off to recharge and baby we're back also it's already mid-march this year is going by so quickly so a few times a year i like to just cleanse all the negativity and anyone that is evil out of my life so it's been nice to trim trim you negative fake ass hoes um <laughs> but i feel amazing life is so great and don't let the demons get you that's like his annual rant i feel like he does one of those every single year and it's always him cutting somebody out of his life like literally well at the time nobody had any idea who jeffree star was referring to well, the internet has been interneting and they have now figured out that jeffree star is no longer following his makeup artist boom and vice versa because boom is no longer following jeffree star this is really strange to me because jeffree star posted a lot with boom mm -hmm. a lot he was always on his instagram story they were out on the ranch doing all that shit that they do i want know what happened here because there has to be a good reason or maybe not a good reason but there has to be a reason why they've unfollowed one another you don't just unfollow someone that was on your payroll for a substantial amount of time i know really it's none of our business as to why their friendship ended but it kind of is now our business yeah. because jeffree star went to his instagram story and he said that he was cutting out somebody negative from his life so of course people are going to look and they're going to notice that he's not following certain people anymore so now i do want to know like what happened like why is their friendship over like why is someone fake this time and you know it probably is it's probably one of those like loyalty things this is the vibe that i'm getting yeah. from it it was probably like jeffree needed his makeup done for something and like he was going somewhere and boom chose to do someone else's over his i just want to know at what point did it happen because it went so under the radar well i wonder if boom will ever actually say anything about this the only reason that we actually know about this is because people were commenting over on Instagram to be like, hey, Jeffrey is no longer following Boom and Boom is no longer following Jeffrey. And they were also commenting that Boom was over on his Instagram story, basically saying that he like cleared out some negativity as well. So I don't know, maybe one day he'll upload himself a TikTok or maybe he'll upload himself a YouTube video a and he'll let everyone know a My Truth video. He's probably like behind an NDA. 
for sure. Oh, I bet so. I'm pretty sure Jeffree Star's got an NDA on him. And with all that said, everyone, that is it for this video. We hope that you did enjoy it. Please leave us a foot emoji down below if you think it's like complete bullshit. That Larsa Pippa literally said that her job of selling her feet over on OnlyFans, again, we're not knocking it, make your money, girl, but there is a no way that that job is more important than an anesthesiologist. Like, come on. And we will see you guys all in our next video. Bye.